I'm gonna be a goddamn maniac about these. Welcome to episode 12 of um, Review, where I go over my old reviews and review if they're still worth owning any of the things in them. Now, I ended on the um, Stax 2170, and now we have to pick up on the Hyperman HE350, which um, it was a Master of Exclusive, and it was the first dynamic hi-fi mitt? I say with a, with a lift of my end of my voice, because I don't remember if that's 100% accurate, but it was cheap, it was like 120 bucks. And now I know I had just tested the HE300 and HE400, and I love them. I'm sorry, was it the 300, 400, 500 maybe? And I'm like, oh, the 350, I'll get this. And they were, in a word, not great. Just not great, they were not great. Uh, I don't think I don't think Hyphenman hasn't come back to dynamic since then. Like, have they? They failed pretty fucking hard. And I think they were they using the screw in connector too. So I was like, no, just, no. Uh, no. In fact, Ryan from Monthouse just messaged me. Apparently, there's the 560 version four out, currently nine hundred dollars, but you could save six hundred and fifty dollars and buy it now for two hundred bucks. And I'm just like, Hyphenman, figure out what your shit costs and just go with that. Um, the Sonos Connect amp, which I bought from a, a user, a, a guy who was loaning me things back in the day. He um, he loaned me that, and he bought it for like 400 bucks. It was 500 bucks. He bought it for 400 bucks. He's still messaging me. And um, I'm just going to get that to go away. We'll talk about this in a second. And I ended up saying, sell this to me. And he was like, all right, how about 200 bucks? I'm like, you're going to lose $300? And he was like, yeah, whatever. So he sold it to me, and that was that amplifier got the most use of any amplifier in my house, besides probably my surround receiver, because it was so fucking convenient. Like the convenient, like here's the thing: the Sonos, yeah, they overprice, definitely overprice, but their app works fantastically. It integrated with all my smart system shit. Like I would, I set it, I set a schedule. And you could just set like, okay, in the morning, play a Spotify channel that's related to this genre. And then, you know, make sure it fades in. And then have it go for like two hours and then shut off. And then the app was the easiest fucking thing to do. So, and it, you know what? It wasn't even a bad amplifier. It was like 50 watts a channel. And I trusted it to run everything I had. It sat in my kitchen on the metal rack. My metal rack was out in the kitchen. There were those two uh, Kanto Yumi's on top. And it just had a Sono stamp up there forever. And if you walked into my apartment and you wanted to hear music, you hit the play button on it. And whatever music was playing for your alarm, just kept playing. You want to skip track? Tap, tap. Next track played. So fucking convenient and nice. But I would not invest in like a dozen of those. I know as people have mounted like those things in every room. And it's like, that's, that's insane. As a one-off, you didn't need any like service. You had to make an account on your app to control it. But it was so fucking nice. I wouldn't pay five, what, 500? With the amount I used it, it probably would have been worth 500. I'm glad I paid 200, how's that? The Denon, uh, AH D5000 and 7000 Denon. These, you know, Denon has a weird reputation with headphones. They have a new set out that people in my patronage chat are buying, which by the way, $10 patronage chat's where it's at. Where they're all like creaming on each other for, oh my god, the new Denons, the new Denons, the new Denons, the new Denons. I'm like, Denon has a very good reputation like in Japan. But here in America, everyone thinks of Denon, they think maybe about surround receivers and that's about it. So what good is a headphone if no one's thinking about it? Now I've rather to squeeze two headphone reviews in 13 and a half minutes. So what the fuck was I even talking about? I have to go back and watch it now. Beautifully built, a little bit, I know someone who had a set that was like a $2,000 set of Denon headphones, and he had to carry them in like a pillow. Like he had to wrap a pillow around it because any little thing that touched it would scratch the metal. Like it was, they were so fucking delicate and they were gonna break, but they were so, it wasn't gonna break because they were like shittily built. They were beautifully built and were gonna break. Kind of like Alfa Romeo's. It's like, like, holy shit, this is fucking fantastic. Don't touch it. And they sounded, they were all closed back, and they sounded, I wanna say different than other things I've heard, 
But nowadays, I would just kind of say that they were going for like the Sony house sound. Like a lot of low end, a lot. They were like, it was a weird like V shape. Like, oh my God, the detail is so spectacular. And that low end is just splashing all over it. And I, 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 right now to this moment, I can't tell you if I would want to own any of those, like to hear. I just know the people who have dead on headphones and love them, fucking love them. They're like OCD obsessive about dead on headphones. So um, I might link the new one in the description if I could find it. Here's a headphone none of you have heard about. You've probably heard of the Denons more than this. The Philips SHP 8000. I gave you a second to absorb that. Yeah, Ship, Ship 9500, Ship 9600, Ship 8000. Has anyone heard of the closed back Ship 8000? No. I gave those away to a friend because they were such base cannons. Attached wire, completely weird like headband design, like with a floating silicone that didn't adjust. Like, oh my God, they were so weird. Like, I don't understand. It was like someone just took the stamp and said, ship, put it on that. They had no relation to the ship 9500s in signature or build quality or, or detachable, nothing. They made no sense. They weren't even that much more expensive or cheaper. They just, they just existed. They just fucking existed and I didn't understand it. But um, yeah, so I mean, those existed. That, that's all you need to know is that they, welcome to the, the Pleasure Dome, they existed, would not recommend. Now here's something that I actually, if I had to add some more weirdness to my collection, the original Audio Quest Nighthawks, the ones that were made out of liquid wood, which I know what you're gonna say, Zeos, what is liquid wood? Well, instead of trying to like carve headphones out of a block of wood, AudioQuest had this idea. What if we converted it into fucking sawdust and mixed it with like a lacquer and then compressed the shit out of it to make the shape of our headphones out of what could be considered real wood? I mean, it was kind of like plastic, but it was had similar properties to wood, but it didn't really, it wasn't really wood, but they can get these beautiful patterns out of it by like dyeing it. And it was, I don't care. I don't care about the, the wood press. What I care about is those were, and probably remain to this day, the strangest set of headphones I've ever liked. Because they were dark. Like, when someone asks you what a dark headphone is, you could try to describe it as like, well, like the mid-range is like pushed back, but that would make it V-shaped, so it's not really that. I guess then the, like, there's no it's veiled highs. Like, well, it's a, those had the sound of a skunk shell with a headphone in it. But th yet they didn't sound like a conch shell. To this moment, I can't describe them, which is why I'm interested. And they were an authentically differently built set of headphones. They actually had the shape of a human ear. They had like a teardrop shape, an upside down teardrop, so that your, your lobe of your ear was have, had a space in the thing. They were suspended on like four springs. So there was this like C clamp around the outside and then four springs and it would just undulate on that. And then the actual top headband thing was just a single wire, a single like like loop of metal. And then there was this beautiful big pad in it. So it could just twist and articulate. It was never so fucking weird. And AudioQuest, I give them a lot of shit because they deserve it because they sell cables and tell everyone they sound better and they fucking don't. Or look better and they fucking don't. Or move your internet better and fucking don't. So I don't like AudioQuest as a company, but my God, whoever they shoved on the, on the Nighthawks... In fact, I got, it was, what was his name? He signed, he sent me a special quarter inch adapter because the one on my other one didn't fit. He was a nice guy. He designed those, he's great, he's an artist. I'm glad he found a platform to express himself in that headphone. But the AudioQuest company will tell you that your audio doesn't sound as good unless you use their cables and they're fucking lying. So moving on. Hyphen HE350 sound demo, 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 Jesus Christ. Tascam MH8. Um, so I first heard this unit, which is the eight channel um, Tascam headphone amplifier. So it takes balance in or RCA in, and then you get to pick A and B and you have eight individualized headphone amplifiers. And I bought it so I could do multiple shoot offs between different things. And I first heard it in Japan at Akihabara in Yodobashi camera. And there was like five or six, like it was set the headphone sections in Japan are just fucking insanely nice. And there was five or six stations set up with these amps and then five or six different brands, Sennheiser Table, 
the AKG table, the fucking Denon table, and you could just sit there in these little booths with plastic sides, and they had all these headphones hooked up to this, and they had like a source box that you could plug your own source into, and then it would hook into this, and you could just listen to all these expensive fucking headphones on that Tascam. And I went, shit, I'm buying one of these when I get back from Japan. And sure enough, a couple months after I got back from Japan, I placed an order, and that thing was like 400 bucks. So being able to play eight headphones simultaneously is wonderful. The thing is, when you try to put eight headphone amplifiers in a single box and you make it only $400, it's not the same as if you had like two $200 headphone amplifiers or four $50, he four $100 amplifiers because now it becomes eight $50 amplifiers. So even though they share the same power supply, which saves a little bit in the cost, um, not the cleanest amplification, but clean enough to like certainly review and, and say, hey, I've heard this, I didn't hear this. Once you sat down with it and got to play with it a little bit. And I still have it, and I'm deciding I wanna put it on my new audio racks, which actually this video, this is number 12, it's probably coming out after I've introduced those on the channel. The two, I don't know if I'm calling them the Vate and the Mercury, or sort of the fuck the racks are. Because it's rack mounted, it should be in a rack, if I rack mounted, but, at the same time, it does an absolutely spectacular job of just burning in IEMs and headphones. So I kind of want to mount it into like a fucking 70 quart chest freezer, like a cooler, and just plug in a loop of either pink noise or music and pink noise, and then put all the headphones on it and put it away and never see it again. But it's convenient as hell when you want to review like four different headphones that are similar and just give them all the same power. So I'll decide what I'm doing with that in the future because it's still here and I'm not getting rid of it. There was also a pile one or a cheaper version that was like 200 bucks but it had wish washy reviews and that one always gets great reviews. Um, the first I, I am shootout two. So four years ago, I had only done two I am shootouts feet, the mass drop re zero zero zero. And, um, I don't know which ones are in this, in this shootout, nor does it really matter. Cause I think I recognize none of them except for those. Those are the winner of the shootout and they're not available anymore. Cause I've checked. That's it. Moving on. Four years ago, IMs is basically like five, it's basically like asking someone about 60 year ago fucking cars. There are no cars that still compete today with performance from 50 years ago. They just don't, they just don't exist. We've come so far in IMs in four years, it's ridiculous. Um, here is a review I did of all three of the Fostex, the T50 RP, T40 RP, and T20 RP. Now I've owned the 50 and then I think I bought the 40 and 20, I just bought them, all of them. And I did my comparison, and it turned out that the T20 RP with the 1840 pads was kind of like a little more fun than the T50 with the 1840, the 1540 pads, and the T40 RP sucked. Didn't expect that. The closed back T40 RPs just never, they were so neutral. Like they were probably doing the best job, honestly, for what, if you're looking for a neutral monitoring cam, but I couldn't stand listening to them, no matter what pads I put on them. They were just like, eh. What do you listen to there, Jim? I don't know. Some shit on some T40s. Breaks my heart. However, you could, if you have any of these and you want to send them to Ryan at Mod House, he can convert any one of those into Argons. Because it doesn't matter if it's closed back or open back or semi-closed. The drivers are all the same with different paper on it, and he's going to replace that anyway. Um, the Shit Valley 2 Hybrid Tube. I have another shit. To now, like right now, it looks like that. I don't think it's a Valley 2. What the fuck is it? Oh God, this is my third one of these I'm doing today. So it's like my brain is just fried. I definitely have another shit Valley 2-ish product in the basement that is made by shit. And we'll find out if it's any good when I actually turn it on. The first official T50 mod four years ago, the Talos. Which was this was the start. I think I did, I think I was perfectly lucky in how what order I got the mods in, because if I would have gotten I do I know I did the Talos, the Mayflower, the oh God what was the other one? The Coney does a mod. A lot of places start doing T50 mods at this point because T50 is like fucking gold. And then the original Argons came out, and then the newer Argons and the T60 Argons. And now if you hear the T60 Argons. All these mods are fucking moot. So the Talos mod is moot. Every mod is moot except for Argon. And it's not actually a mod. It's a whole man spending his life doing it. And he should charge more. 
the TIAC AI 101DA. For the longest time, this TIAC amplifier, what did you, this TIAC amplifier lived on my desk. Like this is my desk. It's where I do my actual like email checking and sit down and I'll catch up on YouTube where I'll edit videos. I've got the Magnus Matius stack there because it deserves to be there. And that deserved to be on my desk because it was a speaker amp, DAC, a headphone amp. It was beautifully built. It was all these wonderful things. I ended up sending that to my friend Tofu in Texas so she could power her speakers with it. But um, like, it was so good. No, wait, did I sell that one? And I might've had a bigger one that I sent down there. There's a bigger one coming up at some point. I love the TX AI 101DA. It did all those things in a beautiful chassis. It eventually got replaced. Well, like things just, just technology got better and, and companies made better things, but they never actually made it better looking. Like that thing, just aluminum knobs, just smooth. Oh God. The SMSL A2, SA98 and SA160. Well now, the A2 was the first digital, I say digital, but like, wait, what the fuck did the SMSL? Yeah, it had a digital volume knob. And is that a headphone out? Yeah, it had a headphone out because I was feeding into another thing. I was feeding it in. Oh wait, that's a speaker out. What the fuck is happening here? They're all speaker amps. That one's got my little um, player plugged into the front of it. That has to be that one. So that has an auxiliary in. Yeah, no, these are all like the SMSL speaker amps. After the SA50, which was just basically speaker amp, the end. Um, they started coming out with different uh, powers. The 98 and the 160 had the same amount of power. But the 160 had a headphone out, and it was a not very clean headphone out. Yeah, yeah, not a very clean headphone out. But it fucking had one. In fact, is that the one that's in my car? My car has a SMSL SA. I thought I had an SA98, but it must have an SA160 in it. But I don't think I have a headphone amp. It's weird. Anyway, it powers some Wavecrest HVL ones in the back seat of my car because I'm lazy. Um, so yeah, we've gotten past this. I would still probably recommend the original, like dumb as a board SA50 power on knob the end because these were more power. The SA98 would be the one I'd probably push if you had to still buy one. But we've been beaten by quality. Anything with those Infineon drivers, the fucking the topping MX3s and the SMSL ADA. A8DS, those things, anything Infineon driver sounds better. Just sounds fucking way better. Sound demo for the Air Motive 6s with the cat on my lap. Air Motive versus JBL 305s. Ooh, 200,000 views. SVS PB13 Ultra subwoofer, complete with cat and a completely photoshopped background because my living room's a goddamn disaster and those wires and everything else. But there aren't in this picture. There's just a cat and nothingness. You're welcome, Internet. In fact, you could see in the reflection of the subwoofer the stuff that's actually to the side of it that made it look stupid. Um, is an SVS PV13 Ultra worth it? Do I even have to answer that fucking question? Of course it is. Every SVS subwoofer is fucking worth it. They're all fucking worth it. I mean... The PB13 now is not even the biggest. Actually, is it the biggest one? No, four years ago, there's been bigger ones. Yeah, there's a bigger one. That had the 13 inch driver. They're beasts. They're just monsters. They're just monsters. And now moving on to the Stax 207 Ultra, which is where I put the big pads on the 207s that were in the other set from the previous um, review. And my God, changed my perspective on what you could do with sound. I, you know what? I don't, I don't remember what the fucking 207s sound like without them. Lacking in bass. But as soon as you do this and you, you crack open the, the sides and let the air leak a little bit out behind the pads. Oh my God. So fucking good. It's more stack shit. You guys don't want to hear about stack shit. You guys want to hear about the SMSL VMV VA2 headphone amplifier. So SMSL VMV D1 is like the big $1,300 DAC that I have in that room powering some speakers or powering some amps that are powering some speakers. This VMV VA2 was a two head, two quarter inch out solo amplifier that was probably their cleanest amplifier. And then it had a high impedance and low impedance output, I think is what the point was of that. 
and it was beautiful, but it was expensive. It was like $200. And at that point, it wasn't powerful. It had like, it was like IEMs and it could do the most gently, the most efficient headphones would power off of it. And it was very fucking clean and no noise in the noise floor, but it was just too fucking expensive. I had to move on from that. To the Fidelio X1s. Oh, so the Fidelios that I actually kept, because I did the X2s, but I never bought them. Then I bought X1s because I found out that the X2s just made the headband taller and the X1s fit my head perfectly. Sounded roughly the same and had a better color scheme. They had brown and silver versus black on black or black on gray. And I love, I still have those to this moment. I have the Ori pads on them, I think. Let me grab that box in an endless loop. I could wash this shit all day. Oh yeah, do it. Just grab that box. Infinite boxes. So would I get Fidelio X1s now? No, probably not. X3s have beaten them. X2 HRs have beaten them. As soon as the HRs came out, I knew that the X1s were never going to get listened to again. I'm just going to have them for fucking, for spite. So, um, we talked for a little bit about how I purchased Shure 1540s, right? The closed back headphone that I really don't like. But I bought it because it's built so well and it's so comfortable and it takes IEM wires and it's got all these other things that are the reason I bought it. Carbon fiber and super lightweight. Bear Dynamic five, T5P was their thousand dollar clothes back and I fucking loved them. They were a little bit dark, but they were far away and they had this really clean detail. Like it wasn't a Bear Dynamic that hurt. There were so many Bear Dynamics that hurt and that was not a Bear Dynamic that hurt. And the reason I bring up the Shores is because DMS is like, dude, they sell the T5P drivers, just the drivers on this site for like 120 bucks. Take your shores that you don't like. Let's get the fucking T5P drivers in there and see if you can make that work. And I thought about it long and hard because it's been so long since I've heard those. I remember putting them at the top of my clothes back list. It's like, whoop, way up there. They're the best. They're the fucking, they're one of the best. And to have that sound in the comfort, I mean, those weren't exactly uncomfortable, but to try to modify that sound into the comfort and lightness of a shore 1540 would be like, mmm. Mm, I know those dropped down to like six or seven hundred dollars. Um, I know there's also a version to like there's the T5P, then the T5P V1, V2. I don't know if there's a V3. I, I can't tell anymore. I don't keep up with it that much. My brain will collapse. Sound demo, sound demo. Oh shit, Argon sound demo. That means it's coming up. I could have sworn I did more sound demos besides the Argon. Sound demo, sound demo. Random items number one. Better late than never, June of 2016. Why does it say nine months ago? Oh, it's one of those weird ones that's broken. Unless I, you know what it is? Oh shit, I uploaded this video four years ago and then nine months ago I released it. And said late is better than never. So, so yeah, June 2016 is when I recorded it and uploaded it. Then I just like never felt like releasing it. In fact, oh my God. The short 1540 box is there. Look at it. Hi, babies. I don't like you, but I bought you. My, whatever. So anyway, nine months ago, I released a random item as number one, better late than never. And I don't even know what the fuck I talk about in it. What am I even pointing at? Yeah, oh my God, my apartment is like a baby. Pasta misses my apartment so bad. She never got to say goodbye. And it was like her safe space. And then I bought this fucking thing. So she hasn't been here yet because borders and COVID so I'm hoping I can make this a comfortable space too. You know, just decorate it nicely and make sure everyone feels safe. Um, the Mod House Audio Argon T50 Mark II Mod. This was it. I had boot carts on my desk, the Porsche cluster. I was still using, like I had nothing, I had things on the six foot table. I look like I'm sewing that box. Like I spin it like a spider and then touch the thing. Uh, if you think I need to fucking sell Argons, please, please stop. Please stop. Although I will say this, I don't think at that time I had any unit that could power them to their potential. So anything I said about them, double it. If I'm, if I give them a, good, a thumbs up, give them 
two thumbs up. If I gave him two thumbs up, give him, I don't, I can't do four thumbs up. I guess if I move my camera real fast, looks like there's two hands there. How does that look? Fucking Argons, man. Ryan at Modhouse is obsessive and that's what you want in your audio file building guy. Mica Origin Plus. Four years ago, this was the baby. This was the one that I was like, holy shit, why the fuck we need anything else? Broken, done. And it's a unit based on another unit that's been rebranded and fixed. And this is the original Plus. I don't remember what, what uh, settings this had. But USB DAC. I don't know if it had a fiber optic in or out. I know the new one does. Um, I don't know if it had a high gain. I know it had a switch to switch between the line out on the back or, or headphone out. I know it had a high low. And a lot of people had driver issues with one of them. I'm not sure if it was the plus. There was like a plus and there was like another one and then there was like a G2. But I still have my, I don't think I sold my original. But this one was like so impressive. And I just love, I loved how it sat there and just like you could just, like even that Motu M2, which is what that is down there, in case you're wondering, which controls, you know, a headphone out and has the volume control for the speakers. If they were on top, like if I could just like 45 them, it would just be so much. I don't know. It was a weird thing. I was obsessed with them. Um, all right, we're going to do one more and then we'll stop for the audio. Audio, Aorist Audio Huron next time. JBL Loft 40s. The Loft 30s and 40s. These were a set of JBLs. They cost almost fucking nothing. I forget. It was like $50 and $70 for those speakers. They were fucking great. Not sold anymore. They just they just vanish from the internet. As soon as I got a set and like I put them on the side and like I'll review them in a bit. Gone. Fucking gone. And it's like, Jesus Christ, I just want people to love me. They were they were like a smooth. You know what? Wait a second. Did those have no crossovers? I'm trying to remember. Am I remembering this wrong? I think those had no crossover, and I think, like, I was like, why would you buy the small one? The big one is like barely any bigger physically and better, and barely any more money. You know what? I'm gonna we're gonna end this on like a mystery. I'm gonna have to rewatch this 18 minute video. What was I? I had them on the desk. I had them upside down. Yeah, I can't judge by my like random flashes of hand movements uh, what they were like. Hey, that keyboard. No, it's a Microsoft keyboard. No, it's that keyboard. It's a Parrox keyboard. Um, yeah, no, I don't remember what the JBL Loft. Anybody have JBL Lofts in the comments? Did anyone have the Loft 30 or 40s? Little bastards, little fucking cheap bastards. And I think I, I think I like them, but I definitely don't have them. I definitely did not have them for long. So those things got sold off real quick. Anyway, that's it for today's video. I'll start up again on the Aris Huron, Aris Audio Huron 5, which was like a, a, a real headphone amplifier. It was like my first real headphone amplifier. Um, download that wallpaper in the description. Um, if you want to check out these old videos, they're, they're on this channel, just go back in time. Uh, Patreon and subscribe star keep this channel going. And if you'd like to see reviews early, like real reviews, not these videos. These videos come out to everybody at the same time. But if you'd like to see a review of something that might be out of stock or might go out of stock, if I really like it, you kind of want to check that shit out early. I've destroyed stock before. So check out my Patreon and subscribe star, the $5 tier, let you see those reviews. They let you participate in the yard sales, which from the 1st to the 10th of every month, I sell things that are not needed or companies have sent to me or I've purchased or people have donated to the channel. And then um, on the 10th, your, your highest bid wins, it's a blind selling auction. I will ship internationally, um, as long as you want to pay 33% of the shipping costs, because I used to make 50%, but now it's just too fucking expensive because of COVID. So if you'd like to chat with me, there's a $10 tier with a private behind the scenes telegram, which um, I don't know if it's still going on, but I have a temporary one for $5 right now, ending on January 20th. So if it's, before January 20th, you might have a few days to come in and, and ask me questions directly like the $10 tier does. Otherwise, you're going to have to go into the big boy tier, which is there, which I'm already added. Uh, very cool. Does it do 40 as well? I doubt it. See, I answer these people's questions immediately. Yeah, there's a lot of, lot of good people in this chat.
and there'll be a lot of temporary people in this chat when it's actually filled up. This is again for $5 patrons, um, temporarily till the 20th. Uh, what else? Hi-Fi Guides and Hi-Fi Guides forum is bumping. So thank you for that. And I think we're done. And grab your wallpaper. Uh, I'll see you for a regular view tomorrow.